And Gad is more than a new fighter. Of course, calling any military result may not be fair. It is a broad approach that seeks to create a system of systems that will enable America to dominate the world for wind power for decades to come. It includes a highly adaptable and optionally manned platform that possesses substantial range, enhanced survivability, as well as the power of the next generation modular sensor capabilities. The Pentagon's 2023 budget request provides some interesting details that may help to explain the sudden rise and fall of the new identity test on the F-22 Raptor. The documents describe the use of the F-22 as a test case for technologies developed under the Next Generation Air Dominance UNGAD program, as well as the deployment of technologies designed for UNGAD but that can be applied on the first F-22 to defeat the emerging threat. It also develops manned aerial vehicles and equipment, as well as advanced network standards to connect them all. In addition to these advanced factors, UNGAD includes the curriculum and development efforts necessary to support and leverage the technology needed to support the entire UNGAD environment. Some models for UNGAD have been flying for some time now, although the exact content is still a mystery. Therefore, technological development will go in both not only is F-22 used to test and GAD technology, but when it is considered safe, the F-22 will get the technologies developed under the program. In theory, this would increase these future capabilities long before aircraft were developed as part of the NGAD's ability to transport them, help to develop them quickly, and eliminate the risk of eventually using this effort. This is very telling because no other aircraft department on the budget, including F-35s, has a language of this nature. It may also be consistent with some of the changes we have seen in recent months with the F-22 focusing on testing and development methods. These currently include no less than three types of exotic metallic-like coatings that are thought to work to reduce the F-22 signature, especially on the infrared spectrum while having a low negative impact, or even shrinking the jet's notoriously small radar signature. It should also be noted that we have also seen similar coatings on the F-117 and even on the F-35 fleet in recent months, but the F-22 seems to be gaining momentum in the work environment in some areas to do them. The cover is a complex arrangement like mosaics. The F-22 jet test also means that earlier this year it had lower than expected pods under its wing. Our hypothesis is that these are likely to affect the long-awaited infrared search and track capability of the Raptor as well as the potential for enhanced electronic warfare EW capabilities. Both of these plans are mentioned in the budget. Although the EW upgrades are said to be ongoing, the Earth's development of the F-22 has gained a prominent place in the budget. Although we cannot say for sure if any of the visual characteristics of the F-22 are related to NGAD-related tests, it is possible that they are. Given this in terms of budget documentation, we will see more research and analysis of this model on the Raptor fleet in the near future. In the execution of other advanced upgrades recommended for the F-22 fleet, which includes everything from navigation to radar upgrades, everything is not unexpected. One major authority listed in the document is low-drag tanks and pylons among other. Less exotic enhancements slated for the F-22 fleet, which includes everything from navigation to radar upgrades. This trailer tank and pylons project is very exciting because it is also part of the ATD, which is integrated with the NGAD Technologies Test and Integration Arrangement. The F-22 has been operating 600-gallon fuel tanks for years, as well as jettisonable pylons on them. Part of the F-22 program developed this system. While the loss of the tank and pylon on the plane will still leave the F-22 in the damaged radar area, the connection to the pump will still be revealed that will make the aircraft harder to see on the radar and compared to having a tank. Or even only pylons are added. The new design aims to incorporate a more efficient configuration in the pylon that causes fewer problems or fewer problems in the radar section compared to a clean F-22 once the tank and pylon are destroyed. The length of the F-22 is always its weakness and the external tank will be a very important part in the long-range combat operation of the Pacific against its biggest enemy, China. Having an F-22 tank that works well with jettisonable pylons without disrupting the jet radar will be a huge advantage and help maintain the F-22's needs. The technology will also be integrated into the NGAD platform, a human-powered aircraft designed to combat long-distance supply.
regarding Ingat itself. We have not received much new information about it in this year's budget. But what we are getting is a major indication that something important is happening in the 2025 budget year, where the program programming is a budget. It was almost doubled and continued during that time, rates from there. Finally, there's something else interesting about the F-22 section of the budget. In some ways, this strange paragraph is applied as if it had no place. This paragraph is a tribute to all of the people that have poured their heart and soul into designing, building, flying, funding, modernizing, and sustaining the F-22 Baby Raptor throughout its years of service. It has steadily flown missions and broken records, known and unknown around the world since it began flying 25 years ago. It is the sheepdog, the watcher in the night that keeps our adversaries at bay. And it wouldn't be possible without the entire team pushing the very limit of possibility every single day. It is unknown at this time what he will do after leaving the post. USAF plans to completely eliminate them by the 2030s once INGAD is ready and the small F-22 fleet is now available for a significant reduction if the Air Force succeeds. The 2023 budget plans to reduce the F-22's capabilities. These 33 F-22s, each with combat code, are likely to be eaten to help support a more powerful F-22 submarine. The model is as difficult to maintain as it is, so these donated aircraft will solve some problems with that, at least for a while. But it does mean that training and other activities will be forced on the front boats, which will emphasize a smaller corner of what could be around 150 cells or more. The point here is that a clear idea emerges here. The Air Force wants to support the small F-22 fleet with upgrades by restructuring the budget saved by the retirement of some existing fleet. By the way, it will make the F-22 whatever it was promised to be, as it eventually got Erst and others, while using some of the projections and the rest of the power helping to develop its business technology and returning to the Raptor fleet. This, it seems, will be enough to drop the F-22 completely until Engad can be delivered. This is far from a low-risk strategy, especially choosing to remove 33 of already smaller and more expensive ones, but it should give the Raptor a more effective one. Again, with the F-22 more powerful, it could be argued that it would be worthwhile to upgrade the 33 F-22s to the latest design to take advantage of these developments without reducing the dissipated power. Given that the F-22 has an operating capacity of about 50% in times of peace, most airborne units will be useful during major conflicts. At the same time, it is another signal that the USAF is going to engage including the sacrifice of some of its marquee troops to ensure that technology is running fast for the F-22 power reducing can reach its final arc. While Engad waits finally on the wing to take center stage, Congress is skeptical of USAF and Engad bets in the past. We can see the current debate that power is about to cut the F-22. Either way, it is now clear that the two programs F-22 and Engad are directly linked, for better or worse.